afternoon. Thank you for attending this conference. Buenas tardes. Gracias por atender la conferencia. Voy a hablar en español. Luego voy a hacer. Later on, I'm going to be. Uh, I'm going to do a, a wrap up in English as well. Vamos a hacer directo, a hablar corto y directo. Short and straight to the point. Eh, el gobierno de los Estados Unidos de América ha decidido iniciar una campaña de agresión en una nueva fase más alta, más aguda, eh, contra Venezuela. En esta fase toman la delantera y el control. Ya no pretenden que haya una oposición en Venezuela que... No translation. Well, I, I will do it for you later on in English. Don't you worry. I will do it in English. OK. En esta fase, ya no pretenden que haya una oposición en Venezuela que lidera algún proceso. Simplemente toman el control, atacan los procesos de diálogo entre los venezolanos, eh, deciden que ellos tienen un plan económico para repartirse a Venezuela, que va a ser presentado en Perú esta tarde por el señor Wilbur Ross, secretario de Comercio de los Estados Unidos. Él decide por Venezuela, ya es un plan colonial, directo, de administración colonial. Se olvidaron que tenían unos administradores locales. El plan es hecho en Estados Unidos, el plan está diseñado en Washington para Estados Unidos, obviamente. Y eh, amenaza militarmente con un bloqueo, naval y una cuarentena como hizo el presidente de los Estados Unidos el viernes pasado y hoy anuncia, anuncia un embargo económico total. Todos los bienes de Venezuela van a ser eh, congelados y toda persona que comercie con Venezuela sin el permiso de Estados Unidos va a ser condenado. Esto es lo que se llama medidas coercitivas secundarias. Es no nada más que atacan a los venezolanos, al pueblo venezolano, creando una hambruna o intentando crear una hambruna sino que aplica medidas a todos los países y ciudadanos del mundo por simplemente porque comercian con Venezuela. Es decir, Estados Unidos es un reino mundial que gobierna al mundo sin importar las Naciones Unidas. Aquí lo dijeron incluso en el Consejo de Seguridad, un delegado de los Estados Unidos dijo que la ley internacional y las decisiones del Consejo de Seguridad no eran referencia para los Estados Unidos, para sus decisiones políticas, porque... Ellos tenían sus propios intereses y su propia visión del mundo. Es lo que se llama el excepcionalismo de los Estados Unidos, que les dice a ellos que son una nación tan distinta que están arriba de la ley internacional, exceptuados de cumplir con la ley internacional, tienen todo, según ellos creen, el poder para ignorar la ley, ignorar el derecho, ignorar la razón, ignorar la comunidad internacional e imponer por la fuerza su poder en el siglo XXI. Nosotros los venezolanos rechazamos esta pesadilla que presenta el señor Trump al mundo, una pesadilla racista y supremacista que intenta imponerse en Venezuela por la fuerza. Hoy en Lima hay una reunión de eh, 44 países, anunciaron 100, después dijeron que eran 60, asistieron 44, va cayendo el número del apoyo internacional que ellos creen tener ni de lejos es suficiente para entrar a las Naciones Unidas y, y retar nuestras credenciales como quieren hacerlo en septiembre. Los esperamos, por cierto. Y eh, ellos creen que matando al pueblo venezolano de hambre, violando los derechos humanos del pueblo venezolano, haciendo castigos colectivos, creen que pueden imponerse. Es la fuerza y el poder de la arrogancia de un gobierno que plantea la guerra perpetua para eh, expandir su dominación. Y en Venezuela... Vamos a resistir y vamos a vencer esta nueva ola de ataques imperiales del gobierno de los Estados Unidos. Un gobierno, por cierto, que con tantos problemas internos está haciendo una fuga hacia adelante porque lo que está es tratando de sembrar la discordia y el odio dentro de su propia nación, encendiendo los demonios del racismo y de la discriminación atacando a los extranjeros, atacando a los latinoamericanos y ahora en especial a los venezolanos. Nosotros somos la punta de lanza de la resistencia contra esta ola supremacista que ni siquiera es fascista, es anterior al fascismo, es más, más anacrónica. Anterior al fascismo, esta ola blanca supremacista que se inicia desde la cabeza del gobierno de los Estados Unidos. 
para terminar la exposición, nosotros hemos escrito una carta al secretario general y una carta a los miembros del Consejo de Seguridad denunciando no la situación de hoy, puesto que nos acabamos de enterar, ¿verdad?, anoche, sino las el, amenazas militares del de bloqueo naval del gobierno de los Estados Unidos. Le escribimos al Consejo de Seguridad. El Consejo de Seguridad tiene la obligación de eh, tomar medidas, de impedir la violación del derecho internacional por parte de un miembro permanente que obliga al resto de la comunidad a condonar, a avalar, a apoyar su violación de la ley. Por eso le escribimos al Consejo de Seguridad y le solicitamos que intervenga usando las facultades que le da la Carta a las Naciones Unidas. Y también le escribimos al Secretario General de las Naciones Unidas que también haga una, le pedimos que haga una condena pública a esta agresión contra Venezuela. El Secretario General debe hablar porque se está violando la ley, se está violando los derechos de las naciones acá, se están violando los derechos de otras naciones, no nada más de Venezuela. Y el secretario general puede usar sus buenos oficios también para intervenir en el asunto. Pero tenemos dos cartas, una al Consejo de Seguridad y una al eh, secretario general. En inglés y en español les daré copia a ustedes. Para un momento voy a hacer un resumen en inglés. Uh, today we are sending letters, two letters, to one to the Security Council and one to the Secretary General of the UN. In those letters we ask, first we relate the series of aggressive and hostile actions of the United States government, particularly President Trump's administration, against Venezuela, and uh, very serious and dangerous in severity and gravity. First, President Trump's last Friday threatened Venezuela with a naval blockade and with a quarantine. These extreme, extraordinary actions are established in Article 40 one of the UN Charter only if are authorized by the Security Council, only, and they are authorized by the Security Council only if there are threats to uh, peace, a uh, breaking of the peace, or a clear case of aggression. We have none of these cases. We have no authorization of the Security Council. We have no evidence of Venezuela breaking the peace or um, threatening the peace or even uh, 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 attacking anyone. But without these uh, requirements, the United States, without any regard for international law, is threatening with a quarantine and a naval blockade against Venezuela, threatening with uh, fabricating a famine in a Latin American country just for the purpose of imposing uh, its imperial uh, interests. More than that, uh, In that letter, we relate how the U.S. government is provoking a military incident and is fabricating a military incident in Venezuela by sending spy planes, spy aircraft into uh, the flight information region controlled by Venezuela without any warning, just for the sake of creating an incident and then threatening at the same time with using his uh, force, his might, military might, against Venezuela. They are fabricating a casus belli, they are fabricating a justification, an excuse to clash with Venezuela and invade Venezuela. And uh, we relate there more than 55 incidents where the Southern Command, the US Southern Command, sent military planes into uh, Venezuela, the Venezuelan flight information region without any warning and without any information, information afterwards. We are not talking about mistakes, we are talking about a plan, a systemic execution of a plan trying to get an incident and put it at risk all the civil aviation in that particular region. More than that, we also relate how the US and the American officials uh, first announced in the Washington Post on the 8th of May how they, after the failure of the coup d'etat, because they planned and executed a coup d'etat in Venezuela, which failed miserably, and out of their frustration, they declared to the Washington Post that they were able, they were willing to show their uh, teeth, to show their muscle uh, against Venezuela by sending military assets off the waters of Venezuela. And immediately the next day, they send uh, new US Coast Guards into the territorial waters of Venezuela, maritime territory, and 
or as close as 14, not 14 nautical miles of Caracas. As close as that. And that vessel was escorted out of our territory by Venezuela and the Venezuelan Navy. But what I mean with all these uh, events is that the Americans, the, the US government, not the Americans, the US, the Trump's administration, the racist administration, the raciest ever administration in the history of this continent, is trying to get a war, trying to uh, fabricate a war on Venezuela. And the, the, the militarization of the relations with Venezuela is one of the dangers that we are trying to expose. And we are asking the Security Council to exercise its powers uh, expressed or written clearly uh, in the uh, charter, Article uh, 34, that off gives the power to the Security Council to investigate any matter that could threaten the peace. And uh, it's incredible that one permanent member of the, United, the, the Security Council with the responsibility, high and heavy responsibility, of uh, obeying the international law and defending the international law and promoting international law is breaking international law and forcing the rest of the international community to support their breach of international law. I mean, we are talking about... A, a, World power which behaves as a rogue state. It's a rogue world power. It's dangerous. The United States now is a threat to international peace, and we are asking the Security Council to, Council to take action. The same goes with the Secretary General. The Secretary General, Secretary General uh, uh, hasn't yet uh, condemned the threat to peace and the military threat and the military threats to use force against Venezuela publicly, and we are asking him to do so and to uh, intervene using his uh, mediating capacities uh, into, into, into these matters to see if we can uh, de-escalate the conflicts, because the U.S. right now is escalating the conflicts. A proof of that is what happened today in Peru. Today, Mr. Bolton went to Peru, and uh, on top of what I have just said, uh, he announced a total economic embargo against Venezuela, as we had never seen in our history. And uh, they are freezing all economic assets in U.S. territory. But more than that, they are threatening with uh, coercive measures any individual or company or country that deals with Venezuela. It's a worldwide measure. It's not within the U.S. jurisdiction. They are threatening to uh, apply coercive measures against any individual in the world, wherever it is, that deals with Venezuela. I mean, the United States behaves as a world power. It's the, the, the world power as we have never seen in history. They are a power over the rest of the world. United States uber alles, you say in German, as the German anthem, the Nazi German anthem. The idea is that we have this rogue superpower imposing their, its will over the rest of the world and uh, forcing the rest of the world to obey them while they are uh, violating the human rights of entire populations. We reject this nightmare. We reject this aggression. And we will also take the measures necessary internationally and nationally to defend ourselves. But this is an act of war what the United States is uh, 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 declaring against Venezuela in front of everyone for no reason. Venezuela is not a threat to anyone. And uh, the United States is uh, fabricating this aggression just to take the oil. And if you don't believe me, listen to Mr. Wilbur Ross, the Secretary of Trade of the United States, who is speaking in Peru uh, this afternoon, and he's already uh, proposing a plan to uh, rearrange Venezuela after they topple our government in their dreams or in their nightmares. They already have a plan. Have they consulted that plan with any Venezuelan? No. It's a plan made in Washington, written in Washington, thought out in Washington to impose to Venezuela after they topple the Venezuelan government. It's an imperial plan. It's a colonial plan. This is the kind of new uh, brazen colonialism in the 21st century, which is fueled by uh, racism 
white supremacism, white nationalism, violence and hate. And we are going to confront that is our right to defend ourselves. I stop here. I'm going to give you a copy of the letters that I, I, I we sent to the Secretary General and to the Security Council in English and in Spanish. And I am now able to answer your question, the first question to the lady, the senior lady here, the dean. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. Thank you, Ambiad Fufanka, for this press conference. Uh, Venezuela accuses the US uh, uh, of economic terrorism. So what does it mean? And uh, do you plan to respond uh, uh, concretely in any way? Thank you. Economic terrorism is the right and only correct definition of what they call, they themselves call sanctions after they were an authority. You could accept sanctions from a legal or legitimate authority, but they are not authority over Venezuela. They are attacking Venezuela with economic measures, economic warfare, and more than economic warfare, economic terrorism, because they are preying on the weak, praying on the civilians, praying on the elderly, praying on the women, praying on the children. They are praying on those who cannot defend themselves and taking them as hostages in order to bend the, our government's will uh, towards their interest. So that's the actual definition of terrorism, using violence for political processes, pur purposes on civilian population. They are attacking the civilian populations. Oh, oh, Forget about the individual sanctions. We are not even complaining about that. They are telling every single one person and company in the world that if they deal with Venezuela on any single issue, they will, be, uh, they will pay for it. And they said, be cautious because we are looking for you, we are watching you, and you will pay dearly for it. This is economic terrorism, as simple as that. Thanks, Ambassador. Michelle Nichols from Reuters. Um, you said you're asking the Security Council and the Secretary General to take action. What kind of action would you like to see them take? And uh, just throwing forward to the UN General Assembly next month, are you expecting President Maduro to attend again? How long will he be here for? And is there any chance he might meet with President Trump? I cannot see the future. I mean, the last two questions are too difficult. First one, can't foresee if there is a meeting between these two presidents. Second one, I'm not in the position to predict his uh, uh, visit to New York and to the UN in September, which normally presidents come. He will taste the waters and see if it's the right time and the right uh, uh, action to take. But... Uh, what actions are we asking the Security Council to take? First, Article 0.24 of the Charter states the following. All members shall refrain in their international relations from the threat or use of force against, any, against the territorial integrity or political independence of any state or in only any other manner inconsistent with the purposes of the United Nations. Article 2.4 of the Charter. This is clearly uh, uh, breached by the United States. They are threatening the use of force, uh, th uh, threatening the, our territorial integrity and political independence. So clear. They themselves say it with, without any... Uh, uh, hint to, of, of trying to do otherwise. And Article 34 of the EU Charter also states the following. The Security Council may investigate any dispute or any situation which might lead to international friction or give rise to a dispute in order to determine whether the continu continuance of the dispute or situation is likely to endanger the maintenance of international peace and security. Clearly, the Security Council has the authority to intervene in this manner. And clearly, one member, and even worse, permanent member of the Security Council is breaching international law, is violating international law and violating the principles of the very same Security Council. So the Security Council has the responsibility, has the legal capacity, and it needs the will. Will they have the will? We'll see. But they have the responsibility, the duty, the obligation. We are asking legally to the only organ in the world with the power to stop this madness. Let's see if they do it. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. Edith Lederer from the Associated Press. Do you see uh, U.S. sanctions as helping or hurting 
uh, the dialogue between the government and the opposition. Thank you. Mr. Bolton said himself this morning, they don't like any kind of dialogue. They are against dialogue. They are against any kind of conversation. We, we, I came myself two or three weeks ago to this very same place to denounce exactly that, that the United States is sabotaging, is undermining, is destroying dialogue in Venezuela, and the only way out for them is war. War and co complete and total domination. I mean, they are so arrogant that the only way they understand is the way of a bully. They are bullying everyone around, and they think they can do it in Venezuela. And the, by, by point is, they dream with a world without, without the United Nations, without international law. We are here exactly to do the opposite. We are trying to do, do it the legal way, but we are going to defend themselves, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. We are not going to put up with this bullying. Gracias, señor Mancada. Algo con mi... Sí, está bien. Uh, soy María Grenova de Agencia TAS. Uh, pues, uh, además de sanciones económicas, uh, presidente Trump um, impulsó un bloqueo total a las propiedades de Venezuela. ¿Y qué exactamente esto significa para...? Uh, ya sabemos que los diplomatas venezolanos no pueden trabajar en la embajada en DC, pero ¿qué significa para la misión aquí, la misión de Venezuela a Naciones Unidas? Uh, gracias. Gracias. Imagino que la situación empeorará. Ya es mala. Ya aquí es muy difícil, imposible trabajar con ningún banco. I like to say that in English because it's important for everyone to know. It's impossible for us to work with any uh, bank in the U.S. It's impossible, not now, from more than a year. It's impossible to get any money to pay to do any transaction. Uh, I mean, they are blocking every single way to, in order to prevent us from working here. And they are trying to do the same all over the world. My point is this one. How come, what power has the United States, what legal power to impose these sanctions or these uh, or coercive measures, illegal, uh, cruel, monstrous measures against entire population? None. I mean, we are talking of a war crime. This is, these are crimes against humanity. These people are criminals. You have to say it with all the letters in there. They are war criminals. And they are, try, they are using economic measures the same way that other people use bombs in the Second World War, for example. The exactly the same calamities, the exactly the same kind of casualties and victims. But some people are choosing not to see there is a moral blindness here. And we need to denounce this moral blindness in most of these powers that they uh, mount their white and high horses and think they are, they are moral enough or they are righteous enough to criticize the rest of the world, but they don't see these crimes against Venezuela. Say in Spanish now. It's muy importante que estas violaciones del de gobierno de los Estados Unidos contra los diplomáticos venezolanos, contra la economía venezolana, contra el pueblo venezolano, esto es muy importante. Ellos dicen que no, que, fíjense, ya se les olvidó todo el tema humanitario. No era que estaban hablando por el pueblo de Venezuela, que lo querían mucho y que los niños venezolanos, ya se les olvidó. Ahora amenazan con guerra, amenazan con sanciones, dicen que tienen una ventana para las medicinas y la comida. Mentira, porque le están diciendo a todo el mundo no toquen nada que ver con Venezuela. Ya mismo, venezolanos comunes y corrientes, venezolanas y venezolanos, hoy mismo en la mañana, están recibiendo eh, suspensiones de sus cuentas con miles de otras empresas en el mundo que le dicen no podemos trabajar con Venezuela porque es muy riesgoso. Muy difícil trabajar con Venezuela, cerramos su crédito, cerramos la relación con usted, cuando esto mejore volveremos. Civiles, personas comunes y corrientes, jóvenes que tienen pequeñas empresas haciendo, vendiendo software, vendiendo programas, vendiendo diseños, gente que vive eh, de, su, de su trabajo decente y honestamente no traficantes de drogas, todas esas cuentas están siendo suspendidas hoy por miedo que tienen a la amenaza del gobierno de Estados Unidos. Estamos hablando de una masiva violación de los derechos humanos. Y ellos creen crear una hambruna, quieren crear 
una hambruna en Venezuela, doblegar al pueblo venezolano por dolor, enfermedad y hambre. Y esto es un crimen, porque lo están haciendo por razones políticas. Y Estados Unidos no tiene nada que hacer en territorio venezolano, puesto que Venezuela es libre e independiente. Another question. Yo okay. Come on. Later. Ah, gracias, embajador, por la conferencia de prensa. Eh, tras el anuncio de Trump de que bloquean totalmente a Venezuela, eh, Bolton dijo que el tiempo del diálogo ha terminado y que ahora era el momento para la acción. ¿Cuál es el mensaje de Venezuela? Gracias. Let's translate that in English as well. Mr. Bolton himself says this morning that time for dialogue is over and now it's time for action. I mean, he's the enemy of dialogue. Mr. Bolton es el enemigo del diálogo. El señor Bolton no es venezolano. Es muy importante que se entienda. El diálogo es entre venezolanos. ¿Quién es el señor Bolton para meterse? ¿Quién lo llamó? ¿Quién le dio la autoridad? ¿Por qué los Estados Unidos creen que pueden meterse en esto? Pero nada más eso, amenaza al pueblo entero de Venezuela, sin importar si son de un lado o de otro. Ahora, por eso comencé diciendo, muy importante que se entienda esta idea, estamos en una nueva fase. Ya no es los Estados Unidos apoyando un golpe o una guerra porque apoya, apoya una facción en Venezuela. No, 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 ahora los Estados Unidos toma el control y se olvidó de esa facción en Venezuela. Ya no los toma en cuenta, les está diciendo, se hace como yo digo, y el plan económico es el que yo digo, y Venezuela se reparte de esta manera. Por eso digo, se abandonaron las máscaras humanitarias, se abandonó la máscara de que luchaban por la libertad, ahora estamos claramente en un proyecto de dominación colonial, de invasión directa y de control directo de los Estados Unidos sobre Venezuela, y es nuestra lucha por nuestra segunda independencia nacional. Por eso es lo grave de lo que estamos viviendo en estos momentos. Estamos luchando por la segunda liberación de Venezuela. The last one. Well, two more. Mr. Uh, Ambassador, so can you tell us uh, about the scope of these measures in the U.S.? How viable uh, these assets uh, that are subject to uh, the new uh, decision uh, by the U.S., how important they are for Venezuela and what are we exactly talking about? Are these uh, bank accounts, uh, gold, money? What is this exactly? Everything related to Venezuela in the U.S. is taken by the U.S. government. It's blocked. As simple as that. Everything. Refineries, bank accounts, assets, buildings, everything that they can take, they will. Uh, I imagine that if we, if, we take a, if we take a flight in a plane towards the U.S. territory and land here, they will take the plane if the plane belongs to the government. I mean, it's a confiscating measure, universal confiscating measure is theft, plunder, and pillaging in a planetary scale. That's what it actually is like. Theft and plunder in a planetary scale. There is no way to justify this uh, measure. But more than that, is I, pay attention, planetary scale. No, I'm not talking about the U.S. only. They are saying to everyone around the world, don't touch anything related to Venezuela because you will pay for it. If we found that you had any dealings with Venezuela, we will take your assets only also in the United States. They are scaring away everyone. It's economic terrorism. That's why it's, it's, it's another scale of the aggression. It's not what happened until last year. They are stepping the gas in order to accelerate the crisis, in order to create a clash and provoke an invasion. They are creating the crisis. This is economic war. This is war by another means, by other means. Uh, yeah, uh, can you uh, tell us why you think the uh, executive order was um, issued today? What, what incited this move? And what is the status of the Norwegian-led dialogue between Uh, the two uh, factions, thanks. The timing of the decision, the executive order, is clearly out of frustration. They failed miserably on the 30th of April when they staged a coup d'etat. They failed with other clandestine attempts uh, to create a, a 
atrocities in Venezuela. They have failed by uh, uh, clandestine operations attacking our power, electricity, national grid uh, system. And also, uh, they have failed because the, the, the people they supported, the local administrations within Venezuela that they imagined and thought that would take the streets in masses, in masses and they will take over uh, the dictatorship palaces as they think in their own uh, sick imagination, it never happened. Because, because they are based in untruths, in absolute uh, baseless uh, uh, propaganda. They believe their own propaganda. They are intoxicated with their own propaganda. As you say here in the US, they drank their own Kool-Aid. So they are acting out, out, out of their own uh, uh, mistakes, and in desperation, they are taking these aggressive measures, making everyone to pay for their own mistakes. Now children, Venezuelan children, Venezuelan women, and Venezuelan elderly will pay with pain and sickness and diseases and even hunger because they think they, they can do so, as simple as that. But we will act and we will work with all our hearts to stop them from suffering, uh, for, uh, from uh, perpetrating these uh, atrocities against our people. This is our duty. The last one. And, and the dialogue? The well, Norwegian sorry, the dialogue is the point. The dialogue, the dialogue is among Venezuelans, and they are intervening in dialogue. They, are, they say themselves, Mr. Bolton, we don't believe in dialogue. We believe in, the, in, in action. Maduro has to go. That's what he said this morning. They are sabotaging the conversations among Venezuelans. What right has they got to do that? None. My point is the United States right now is the main factor for against stability and peace in the continent, perhaps in the world. Have any of these sanctions affected you personally, your ability to access uh, your own finances or anyone in the mission? No, so far, uh, so far I am a diplomat. My uh, uh, personal belongings here I pro are protected so far because they also break the uh, uh, host country uh, agreement. But so far I protected my personal belongings. But... Uh, the bank accounts of our d d mission and also our properties in Washington were taken. Uh, the consulate in New York was taken. What do you mean by the bank accounts of your mission? Uh, the bank accounts, that, the money that we use to pay our operations here. Water, internet, cars, rents. Uh, you see, all that. We haven't been able to get one single dollar through one bank account or any bank in the U.S. for more than a year. No money can get in there. So how is the Venezuelan mission to the UN right now paying salaries and... Good question. Ha how do you have Good the water? Good question. Good question. We are, it's very complicated. It's complicated. It's not using bank accounts. That's the only thing I can tell you. What does that mean? <laughs> as simple as that. We are not using bank accounts. It's impossible. Cryptocurrency or gold or oil? Let... let, let let, let you think about it and imagine how can you do that. But I'm not going to tell you because we need to also protect the way we work. It's not secret, but anyway, it's impossible to work in a formal, clear, transparent way because they don't allow it. As simple as that. Okay. Thank you very much indeed for your patience. Good afternoon.